Skip, I believe they're going to move on after the draft. <laughs> um, right now, currently, there isn't a market, um, a heavy demand for Baker Mayfield. He is coming off so, uh, shoulder surgery. I think he's in a very similar situation to Jimmy Garoppolo, Skip. Right now, they're damaged goods. We don't know how healthy they are. We don't know if and when they'll be healthy by the time uh, camp roll around. So if you notice... Uh, John Lynch said, they're, you know, they're in no hurry to do anything with Jimmy G. They're definitely not going to release him. They have a, a great situation. They think Jimmy G has good football. And I think the thing is with Baker, the, the difference here, Skip, is that when you have a quarterback already on your roster that you, you're tied to for five years at $230 million, everybody knows you have to move on from Baker. So I know you have to move on from Baker. Baker is coming off a torn leg, uh, uh, is mm -hmm. coming off of surgery. Yep. I'm in no de demand. I'm in no hurry to, to offer you a third or fourth round pick. And, Skip, I think uh, uh, Matt Ryan was the last third round pick quarterback that's going to be traded. And so, for me, I believe this thing is going to have to play out sometime around the draft. Now, I think the draft is later in April. And so, I think Baker Mayfield is going to be on the Cleveland Browns roster for at least another month until the draft. Mm -hmm. And then, Skip, he's probably going to be a stopgap because there are three... Uh, if Mel Kuyper and, and, and Todd McShay draft prognostication is true, three quarterbacks, three to four quarterbacks is going to go in the first round. Now, okay, if I draft a quarterback in the third, first round, do I really need Baker as a long term or do I need him as a bridge? Mm -hmm. And so I think those are the avenues that Baker is, is, is finding himself in, Skip. Having surgery and having a, there's not a heavy demand for a market for a quarterback because all the quarterbacks that people really, really wanted They've already been spoken for. That is a fact. So now he's in a very a very uh, perplexing situation, knowing that the, he can't go back to the Browns. The 30 other, 31 other teams know that, mm, why should I offer heavy compensation? And like you said, Skip, there's probably only really like five teams that he can go to. Because a lot of teams, like you said, we they, they've solidified their quarterback situation. So he's in a very, very tough situation. I'm looking at it now the way it looks now. He's probably going to go for Cleveland hopes a fourth, but I'm thinking more of a fifth, fifth or sixth round draft pick at this point in time. Mm. I don't see him getting heavy comp, the, the Browns being able to extract heavy compensation for someone else for Baker services. Mm. Okay. I will start by saying I saw our friend Adam Schefter yesterday on ESPN saying on, I believe it was the 6 o'clock Sports Center, that... Everybody's already capped when it comes to quarterback. Right. And Baker is scheduled to make almost $19 million guaranteed. Yeah. So that's the first problem is people just they, – they've already committed to other quarterback right. options against the cap. Right. So this is a very sticky situation for all involved because it is now clear to the rest of the league that Cleveland is ready mm -hmm. – to just cut bait right. because they plunged on Deshaun, 230 guaranteed million. <laughs> Baker has a big personality that can be a bad personality, can be a right. divisive one. So clearly you need to clear the decks right. for Deshaun after you introduced Deshaun last Friday. Right. Now it has to be Deshaun's team, Deshaun's town, right. and Deshaun's time right. in Cleveland, Ohio, right? right? Mm -hmm. And so to do that, you, you have to remove the, the huge personality, at least the progressive personality, right? <laughs> yes. That is Baker Mayfield. So clearly, the rest of the league is sitting back chortling at Cleveland because they don't want to give anything because they know you are desperate to get rid of it. Right. So they're all laying in the weeds. Anybody who even remotely has interest in Baker Mayfield by saying, why, why shouldn't we just hang on? Right. Because at some point, Cleveland's going to get so desperate that they're going to be forced to do what I believe they will be forced to do, which is cut Baker Mayfield, yeah. or as I hashtag often, hashtag free Baker Mayfield. Right. Because the best thing that could happen to Baker Mayfield, for me, not for you, you, you would say it's the best for you because then you could gloat. They cut him. They cut him. But for me and ultimately for Baker Mayfield, the single best thing that could happen would be to cut him free him to go pick his own destination, <clears throat> right? Yeah. And yeah. if you do cut him, then you, Cleveland, are on the hook for the 19, 19 million, million. Right. unless somebody signs him for the veteran minimum, and then that would cut part of that off. Yeah, but hey, that's a, so, so you're on the hook for 18 million. <laughs> okay, well, that's, okay, that's where we are headed. Yeah. I still believe the Buccaneers are in play here because I still believe 
that Bruce Arians, if in fact he's going on as the coach for the next two or three years, right. I, I don't think Brady's going to be a Buccaneer more than one more year. Okay. That's just my gut feeling on that. And they know, heart of hearts, they were already trying to come up with plan B without Brady. Correct. Correct. And I believe, as I told you before, I believe he was kicking tires in San Francisco. There was the Miami option that fell apart mm -hmm. on the Brian Flores lawsuit. And I believe that the Buccaneers are looking at Baker Mayfield as a, a viable, longer-term yeah. option post-Brady. Well, yes, Skip, I, I'm not going to sit here and say that Baker Mayfield isn't better than Blaine Gabbert or he's not better than Kyle Trask. Yeah, okay. I mean, but th those are okay. what, we, what we'd be up against. Yeah, and Arians is a known fan right. of Baker. Right. Pre-draft, he right. was a big fan of Baker. Right. So, so that would be a good fit. And I would like to see Baker sit in a quarterback room with Tom Brady for a year. I'd just like to see it. I, he would not love it, but I think he would benefit from going to grad school for a year. You do realize that Baker thinks he knows more than Tom Brady. Probably he does. But, but <laughs> I, He doesn't, but he thinks he does. Okay, but, but he would realize fairly quickly he does not. And just being able to sit... And by osmosis, just sort of absorb <laughs> yeah. what Brady does, just watch him operate. Right. I don't think Brady would take him under wing because Brady doesn't seem to be that kind of guy. Neither was Brett Favre with right. Aaron Rodgers. It's just not what he does. I don't think he'd be mean to him or, or, or dismiss him or keep him at arm's length. But I do think Baker, just by observing Tom Brady in meetings and in games, could benefit hugely from that year. And also, he's been battered psychologically and, and obviously physically in Cleveland. I, I think that would be a nice way to go. Skip, how many, guys, how many times have we seen guys be understudies of Tom Brady, be understudies of Peyton Manning, and all of a sudden they get their chance and they're just guys? Now, Matt Castle might be an exception because he did go to Kansas City, had a Pro Bowl he season. Pro and if Bowl. I'm not mistaken, I think he took him to the playoffs one year. I believe he did, I, I think, but, but he should have taken New England to the playoffs, right, but they didn't get there right, at 11 tennis, and 5. Right, 11 and 5, yeah. yeah. That, which was an anomaly, it anomaly was. season. It was. But normally, Skip, when you have a, an understudy, it doesn't work out unless the guy's extremely, extremely talented, a la Aaron Rodgers, a la Steve Young. But Steve Young, by the time he took over, Skip, he was already like 33, 32, 33. Okay, got it. All right, now to my number one most viable option for Baker Mayfield. I'm going to Switch quote. positions? No. Oh. Yeah, you, you've uh, obviously called him a bust. You, you have labeled him a bust. Why you I, I want that on the record that <laughs> Shannon Sharp, the Hall of Famer, has called Baker Mayfield a flat out B U S T bust. I don't like using that term. You Scott. have a bust in Canton. He's a bust <laughs> as a quarterback, you say, which is as far from Canton as you can get, correct? <laughs> he close in Cleveland, though. Okay. All right. Here's the point I'm reading Mike Florio on Pro Football Talk the other day. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to quote from this piece because I did love this logic. His point is that because everybody does know the Browns are done with Baker Mayfield, that in the end, Baker at this point still has a hammer here because he could force the Browns ultimately to release him if he makes it clear that he ultimately will f refuse to embrace whatever new team they might make a deal for. Wait, I don't know. It could be a third round or fourth round or fifth round or, or as you say, a sixth round. Mm -hmm. It could be anywhere in that range. Right. It could be a seventh round. Right. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Just just take him off our hands. Right. Well, whatever it takes, you do this, but you have to pay him. Right. Okay, That's that would be the draft choice. The, right. Where the, the trade would also be where – you need to pay his freight. Oh, yes. Okay. All right. So Baker could just say, I don't know, let's let's throw out Seattle. To me, Seattle's not interested in Baker Mayfield because they just came off 10 years of the model citizen who was <laughs> Russell Wilson. Yeah. And it got so ugly for them that they have tried to spin control it constantly right. in the wake of Russell going, obviously, to your Broncos. Mm -hmm. And I think they don't want any part of Baker because they look at him as too hot to handle right, right. now because he's become the most controversial figure maybe in all of sports, but certainly in the National Football because, League. Because, Kip, you go from a quarterback that said absolutely nothing to a quarterback that says absolutely everything. Mm -hmm. And so that was the lab. They're, they're okay. so diametrically opposite, opposed to each other, is that, damn, we go from Russ and humble and meek and he's going to say the right thing as the consummate teammate, and then you get Baker. Okay, I, I got it. But they are foolish not to dive on Baker because he would be a much better option to me. He's way better than yeah. Drew Locke. Well, I won't fight you on and, that one, And Skip. I don't know what they're doing. I, I don't know what they're doing they're anyway. They're cutting payroll. Did you see okay. all the guys they, they got rid they of? They do. 
that they are starting <laughs> over. Yes. And, and I don't know if they're going to finagle a quarterback. You talked about all the, the, who could go in the draft. I have no idea right. what their, their plan is, but their plan at the moment apparently does not include Baker Mayfield, right. who to me has the biggest, he's become the biggest and easiest target in the National Football League and the most controversial. Oh, why, okay. is, he, why is he all so easy? Well, I mean, I mean. Because you're leading the charge. No, 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 no. You, you and your power of pull pull. No, 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 no. There, right? don't, don't, don't blame me. Yeah. But if, hold on. Now, you mean to tell me that 31 other teams didn't see that 11-game stretch? Mm. I mean, you would think. I mean, the way you was talking about that 11-game stretch, I know 31 other teams saw it, mm. but they seem uninterested. Help me out. The, the final game of that 11-game stretch, I'm not sure if I include the playoff game or not. I, I think I do. So it would be the second-to-last game of that 11-game stretch oh, okay, okay. was where? H help me out. Do you remember off the top of your head? It happened to be a playoff game mm -hmm. that Baker Mayfield actually played in and who knew? He won it. Yeah. It was the first Cleveland playoff victory in 26 years, and it was at arch rival Pittsburgh against right. Mike Tomlin's Steelers, who that year had pulled off an 11 0 start. So right. they weren't just chopping. But what over. did I say about that 11 0 start? Mm -hmm. what, did I been what had Shannon Sharp been telling you yep. about that 11 0 start? Okay, but they were at home, and it was Mike Tomlin, and it was Big Ben Roethlisberger, and Baker did a number on them. The number was 91, which is a QBR number on a scale of 0 to 100 that is sensational, especially for a playoff game, a first playoff game, and you have a 91 and win Cleveland's first playoff game in 26 years. Right. And guess who closely observed that from a sideline perch? Uh, oh, Mike Tomlin, he saw that. So now I'm back to Mike Florio. <clears throat> His conclusion in this piece is that if Cleveland is forced to cut Baker Mayfield, that instantly he would become the best option on the Steelers' depth chart. His point is the Steelers are just laying in wait for Cleveland to be forced to cut so that Baker could choose to go to the arch-rival Pittsburgh Steelers, and he would be the Trubisky perfect... Better. Perfect fit. Trubisky better. You know and I know that Baker is better than Mitchell Trubisky. And here's Florio's point. Baker would be humbled. He'd be motivated. He'd be coachable by Mike Tomlin, who has a gift for keeping difficult personalities pointed in the right direction. Think about what you just said. Huh. So think about what you just said. He'd be, I want you to repeat what he said. He'd be humble. He'd mm -hmm. be what? Motivated. Motivated? Yep. All the things he should have been in Cleveland. He's the number I think one he's over. Extremely motivated. I, no, 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 he wasn't. He was extremely talkative. He yeah. heard everything every personality, TV personality said about him, and he had something snide to say in return. Mm -hmm. And then when they cut, when Hugh Jackson got relieved of his duty, he goes and stands on the sideline in front of Hugh Jackson. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now. All the things that he would be this time around, he should have been the first time around, and guess what? He still have a job in Cleveland. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. So, Florio goes on to say, with that defense and that coaching staff, that all of a sudden Baker Mayfield would become a huge threat within the division to his former team, the Cleveland Browns. I love that. Please free whoa, Baker. Whoa. So, cut Baker. I on. dare you. I've been saying, please cut Hold him. on. If they were to release Baker, you would have to take back everything that you said about Odell, mm. everything that you said about Jarvis, everything that you said about Austin Hooper. I would not care. You I would on. not care. You said that those positions are Wait, dependent. You know, it's funny that both Odell and Jarvis, they're still sitting out there unsigned. Who knew? Hold on. Wait, I, Odell, the superstar, is unsigned? What happened to we're, Odell in the Super Bowl? We're, we're what, almost what, to April. What happened to Odell in the Super Bowl? Ah, uh, he got hurt. Okay. So what? He's a superstar. Hold on, Baker's a superstar. Huh. The number one overall draft pick. Why haven't teams lined up to sign him? Huh. Well, it's interesting that in Tampa, they have a receiver who tore his ACL. They just gave him a big new deal. Wonder why that is. Skip, you huh. know the, the, same, the same reason why the Cowboys gave Michael Gallup. They drafted huh. him. Good point. Yeah, Michael Gallup just got a big deal. Okay, Cleveland Browns took him number one overall. If Baker Mayfield is released, you're going to have to, because you told me you've been telling the world that wide receiver tight end is a dependent position. Those guys got relieved of their jobs, and now they cut the quarterback. And it, it, it seems like, oh, they'd be open to having Odell back. Mm. They don't seem to be open to having Baker back. What's going mm. on, Skip? Mm. 
So Florio goes on to say, even without a no trade clause, teams won't be inclined to trade for a quarterback who doesn't want to play for that team. So maybe some teams are making offers for him as we speak. And Baker's just saying, nah, Hold nah, on. I'm not, I'm not going there. No, no, no. Yep, yep. Matt Ryan got that kind mm. of got that kind of service. Mm. We'll trade you where you want to go. Uh, Matthew Stafford mm. got that kind of courtesy. There have been other players that have got that. Well, there, kind of... There's no courtesy going on. Exactly. Here. Yep. So I'm going to trade Baker Mayfield wherever I'm going to get the most compensation. Okay. But and, how... and if Baker tells said team when they call to say, hey, just checking in with you, uh, I don't want to play for you. Uh, Sorry. At this present time, yeah. bro, at this present time, bro, you better take what you can get. Mm. Hey, you better take it because your next stop, guess what? A grad assistant. Mm. <laughs> you got one or two choices. Play for Team A or your grand assistant in Oklahoma. You mm. choose. Mm. <laughs> Ultimately, says Florio, the Browns may have no choice but to cut Baker Mayfield as part of collateral damage, collateral costs of trading for Deshaun. It's just part of the business where you made your choice, you plunged. And by the way, another quick note that I read this morning that I had missed was that I, I told you Mary Kay Cabot had reported Cleveland was completely content to go forward with Baker when Deshaun said no to okay, them, okay? okay completely okay, content. Okay, okay. And in fact, a, a report that I read this morning said that Jimmy Haslam actually offered to fly his private plane back down to Texas. They'd gone to recruit, obviously, Deshaun in Houston. Right. He was going to fly back down the next day, after they were told no, to Austin, Texas, where Baker is holed up right now because he can't live in Cleveland. Why and he can't live in Cleveland? Well, That's his house, Mr. Progressive. Yeah, and they used to be, but no more, thanks to Jimmy Haslam. Oh, no, not so, Jimmy Haslam, so Paul. Jimmy Haslam was going to fly to Austin to get down on bended knee and say, let's kiss and make up, Baker. How about it? Let that sink in for just yep. a second, Skip. Mm. Let this sink in. I want you to understand what you just said. He said once he thought he was out of the running for Deshaun Watson, yep. he was willing to go down to Austin, Texas, where Baker is holed up and says, you know what? We're willing to move forward with you. Mm. Instead of that, he says, Deshaun Watson, I will add a fifth year to this contract, make it the biggest contract fully guaranteed in NFL history. Is that sound like he wanted to move forward? No, he wanted to move forward with Baker if there's no Deshaun. But again, Deshaun was shooting the moon. Think about it. And he shot it and he hit it. Skip, Deshaun, what? Jimmy Haslam, he and his wife D said, in order, instead of moving forward with Baker, I'm going to add one year at $84 million, Baker. I mean, uh, uh, Deshaun, mm -hmm. you already got four years at 146. So I'm going to add 84 and a fifth year to make it 230, and I guarantee it. Does that sound like somebody that was with? Why would I do that? If I'm so content mm. to move forward with Baker, why in the hell would I add a fifth year for 84 million, guarantee the entirety of the contract, if I'm so confident I can move forward with Baker? Mm. Because as we talked about with baseball and Alex Rodriguez going to the Texas Rangers, the theory in baseball, it only takes one nut. NUT is in one crazy man. Yeah. And the crazy man was Jimmy Haslam. And Jimmy Haslam had decided, I got to have Deshaun. He's a top, I, I, I call him a top three quarterback. I, if I can get Deshaun, well, sure, I, I think Deshaun's better than Baker. Baker's a good fallback position because he's really good. He won me a playoff game. So he's saying, we, we got burned. We tried on Deshaun, and I thought it was pie in the sky. We both laughed at the notion of Cleveland yeah. signing Deshaun. Yeah. And then Deshaun starts to find out that, Wait a second, New Orleans is really cooling, but Atlanta is cooling on any guaranteed money beyond what was already on the contract. Exactly. Right? Yeah. And so they say, let's call back the one crazy man. Let's call back Jimmy Haslam. He's desperate for you. And he was so desperate, it's like, well, what do you want? But no. I'll, I'll guarantee the whole thing. But, if, I, but if I'm willing to wow. move, if I'm willing to move forward with Baker, if Baker is that dude, which you said he is, mm -hmm. why in the hell would I offer an extra year at 84 million I and fully you, guarantee the contract? I told you I loved Deshaun. I mm -hmm. loved him way before you did. I loved him after the first Saban championship game that he lost. I said, this kid is going to be a big star in the National Football League, and I have validated that again and again and again. But you said the same seat. thing about Baker, which you have I just said he's going to be the first pick in the draft. No, 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 no. Skip, do you understand what the first pick in the draft means?
Well, on any given year, you can have a pick where you it's a down year. Oh, so right? now, so now, so hold on. So now that the hey, that now what you said invalidated what you said mm -hmm. because he was the first pick in the draft because it was a down year. No, so I just, I've said from the start he's going to be a star in the league, and he already oh. showed you he's going to be a star. He ain't no star. Yes, he is. He was a star. How? Where? Uh, we saw him in his rookie year. He won seven that games. No, yeah, that's not seven a star. games for a team that oh, went zero and sixteen. Are you kidding me? So now you that win seven games. That is star power. So now you win seven games. You're starting in. NFL. He took Cleveland to their first playoff win, and he did it in a stretch that he threw 20 touchdowns to only three interceptions and pro football focus grading the fourth best quarterback in the whole league. If Baker Are May you kidding if me? If Baker Mayfield is star. a star, hold on. If Baker Mayfield is a star, what the hell is Joe Burrow? He's a slam He's dunk a really Hall good. of Famer. Oh, okay. Well, Boy, we might, hold on. He went to the Super Bowl. He did. You were talking about winning a playoff game, and when the, in the second playoff game, what happened? Yep. Uh, uh, my homeboy got knocked out. He's one on one with Chad Henne. Mm. Do you think Baker Mayfield is better than Chad Henne? I know you do. And what did Chad Henne do to him? Mm. Here's Florio's conclusion, and thank you for setting me up for this. In what will be Mayfield's last game for the Browns, he witnessed the manner in which Pittsburgh embraced Ben Roethlisberger in what was his last game for the Steelers, because Baker was there. He got to see that yeah. one too. With that defense and running game and coaching staff, Mayfield could eventually wrap a 10-year career in Pittsburgh with a similar send-off. A similar send-off as Big Ben Roethlisberger. No. Says Mike Florio. He's really connected. He's not going to get it. Huh. He's not going to get it. Because he's you know what? I love this idea. Yeah. I love Baker yeah. playing in Pittsburgh. Put on your hard hat, baby. Here comes the guy that you will love. Skip, it's never going to be because Ben Roethlisberger was homegrown. Mm. He's a he's a potted plant that they brought outside and, and they planted it. Yeah, he's and, not and, the same. You, you planted him about five times in the ground Whoa. over the last five years. I, I didn't do that. And and Steeler Nation started to burn out on Big Ben. He's got no arm. No, he did. Here comes Baker. What, Skip, I didn't lie. Here comes the future. But Skip, everybody. Woo. Skip, everybody in Pittsburgh could see it. Mm. Oh I understand that they goodness. love Big Ben. Free but you Mrs. Baker, free him. This cut morning, him, please. Gentlemen. They, you gonna get your wish. <laughs> please, you gonna get your wish. Please cut him. You gonna get your wish. Good stuff, good stuff, guys. <laughs> Got to ask you to leave it there. That off-season conditioning program for the Browns, by the way, starts April 19th. So we'll good see luck. if there's a decision a part made of it. by then. <laughs> Thank you for watching. You can subscribe here to get the latest from the show. And be sure to check out more of the best clips from Undisputed or go watch a few other segments from our other shows on FS1.